Hi, I'm Mark at American Gunworks. So maybe you may be thinking this isn't the Mark that I know at American Gunworks. That's the younger Mark. And today he's going to be behind the camera and I'm going to disassemble and reassemble a Colt Woodsman, a fine little firearm that we thought that you might enjoy. This video is for entertainment purposes only. If you don't have the knowledge and skill to work on a firearm, please don't do it. It's very easy to make a firearm unsafe and dangerous without even knowing it. If you haven't experienced, and I hope you haven't, the loudest sound in the world is a bang when you meant to hear a click, and the second loudest sound in the world is a click when you meant to hear a bang. So we'd really like for you to have fun with your firearms, but at the same time, be safe. Okay, let's go over to the workbench and take this Colt Woodsman apart and put it back together again. Again, Mark at American Gunworks. Today we're going to look at the Colt Woodsman, a 22 target pistol designed back in the early 1900s, around 1915 or so, by John Browning. A particular favorite of mine. It's had a few modifications over the years, 38 and uh, about the late 30s, and again in the late 40s, they beefed up the frame. A little bit, made some uh, a few modica modifications to the magazine catches and one thing or another. But basically, the gun has remained unchanged, unchanged, other than those few modifications, and is a relatively simple, uh, robust target pistol. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, take it apart. It has a recoil spring in the slide right in here and it's particularly long and to disassemble the firearm you need to capture that recoil spring the recoil spring naturally red, normally rests on the hammer the mainspring uh, housing the mainspring being of course in the housing then the back of the mainspring housing has a little shoulder up here we'll look at in just a second and it normally rests Against that, house, uh, against that housing. So obviously you couldn't take it apart without collapsing that spring. So you need to collapse the spring and this button right here has another little spring affair inside. I'll show that to you in a minute. That will capture that spring. So we need to first compress the spring and then capture it with that button. Push it back, capture it with the button and that takes the pressure off of that spring. Now the hammer is cocked and the strut is pushing pressure down against the mainspring in the mainspring housing. So we can't get that spring ha that housing off of there without relieving that pressure. Pull the trigger. Now with the pressure off the housing, there's a little uh, roll pin right in here. The later models have another roll pin up in here and you have to take the grips off due to the shape of the grips and push that pin out to take that housing off. You don't have to on the earlier models.
Just push it in right there. That snaps it out of the frame. And the slide will pull off. That recoil spring and recoil spring guide is right in here. I don't know if can you can see that, but it's right there. And there's a spring down inside. That is actuated by this little plunger. It pushes it up and captures that spring. And that's what we did when we pulled the slide back and pushed the button and captured it. <clears throat> then we released the hammer, which the hammer strut was pushing down on the mainspring. And then the mainspring is held in place by a pin right here. And I don't see any need to take that apart. The slide comes off. The sear spring resting on the spear spring right there is also the magazine catch. Of course that's the strut on top of it. Hammer strut. And there's that there's the sear and where the sear spring rides on top of it. On the magazine catch it's got a little shoulder here that rests in that hole right there. And we we'll want to make sure we have that lined up when we put it back together. The grips the simple matter removing the screw. On the later models, you use this screw to remove the firing pin. The firing pin, of course, is housed in the slide. And in this particular model, it has a screw to retain it. And it was staked in. You wouldn't want that screw to come loose while you're operating the gun. So you wouldn't, you'd want to restake that or we'll put some Loctite on it. Again, on the later models, you simply screw the screw, the grip screw, into the screw that retains the firing pin and pull that pin out. The later model extractors, you pull out, turn 100 degrees and, and pull out. This is the earlier model and it's simply uh, very conventional. There's a lot of them around. A lot of people use them. Has a spring and a little plunger. Has a little shoulder on the plunger that holds the the uh, extractor. And I'm not going to pull that out. It's just simple to do. Just push it back, and it just pops right out. When you pull it back, put it back in. Pull it back. Capture it with a toothpick or something. That little hole there. And then just snap it in, and it works quite well. But back to the uh, main topic at hand. This gun's been taken apart a few times, and this is the. Um, sear spring uh, pivot pin and it just fell out. The hammer is retained by the side plate. Did I say hammer? The uh, safety is retained and it's the detent. The side plate is the retains and is also the detent for the safety. Of course it covers up the side of the gun that with all the internals in it and such. Here's the screw. Side plate. The safety.
contains a hammer. Let's see. This particular gun, firearm, has had a trigger job. They bob the back of the sear off and then they smooth the sear and maybe the full cock notch to a lesser degree. And they've done a very fine job of it. This gun uh, firearm has a very nice trigger. Now the part that scares most people is this part right in here. It's relatively simple. However, a lot of people damage it for lack of knowledge of how it exactly works. It's a typical draw bar or a trigger bar, which is also serves as a uh, disconnector. And it's in the trigger and it's just simply snaps up. Comes right out. The trigger spring is what also holds the pressure on the trigger bar. Just turn it out. I'm going to show you that in just a second. The later models have a pin that the uh, trigger pivots on and it's put in from the other side. This has oh, a little uh, bit different affair. It is easy to push that pin out on the other side if you like, but you can also get your fingers under it from this side, fingernails. And there's a spring in there and that's what's holding tension on that spring on the trigger. Just simply pull it out of there. And as simple as that looks, people have a tendency to tear it up. Here's the spring. Again, typically, it would have a pin in the frame that the trigger slides onto in the earlier models. The pin comes from the left side. And there's the spring. The most difficult thing to do, probably, to me, is to put that little spring back in. There's a little notch in the trigger that that spring fits in. The trigger bar, when we put it in here in just a second, we'll take that flat, put it in so that the spring is behind it, and then we'll turn it and the spring will go in the other direction. And that is what operates, it provides the spring tension for the trigger bar. Now this is the difficult part. Looks relatively simple, probably is. Probably just difficult for me. Sometimes you get lucky. Trigger bar, that spring, I doubt that you can see in there, it's back over here, Put the trigger bar in here, turn it so it comes in contact with that spring. Snaps in place.
what order you put the sear and the hammer in really doesn't make a lot of difference. It is a little difficult to get that sear inside the safety and stuff if you put the safety in first, but it can be done. But for sake of argument, I'm going to put the sear in first. What I'm doing here is just trying to line up the hole. Again, this particular woodsman has been taken apart many times. And the pins slide right in and right out. And you'll need to hold a little tension against that sear as you're putting things together to hold that pin in or it'll fall out. And I'm sure I'll do that at least twice before we finish this job. Hammer. Hammer strut. That hammer strut comes off there. Push that pin out. I don't see any reason why we need to take that off. Just trying to line up the hole and the hammer and the frame. If you're going to pick it up, put some pressure on that sear picked it up so I could straighten that out. Again the side plate retains the safety and it also serves as the detent. Got a little spring there right there. fits very nicely so if you're pushing and pulling on it you're doing something wrong to retain the screw that holds the side plate on if I haven't already said it many times I hate it when somebody uses the wrong size screwdriver Tears up the screws, scratches the finish. Try to do a good job and keep the tool tracks down to at least a minimum. Now we're ready to put the slide back on. Again, hold some pressure against that sear so it doesn't fall out. Put the hammer down. Put on the slide. Sear spring, hammer strut, put the strut up. Again, what we're doing here is putting the sear spring on top of the sear. Relatively simple to do. If you put it up there, it's going to it's going to lay on top of that sear. And there's a notch right in here that that magazine catch rests in. Underneath the hammer strut into the notch. Main spring housing. The strut, of course, we're going to move it up out of the way. And then kind of 
whittle it down again so it'll be fitting into the mainspring coming down to rest on top of the mainspring and I told you I was going to lose that pin and I did Try to line it back up best we can here. Falls in easy enough. Okay, again, sear springs in there, main spring housing, wiggle your hammer strut so you make sure it gets in the right place and snap the housing on. Once you get the housing on and spring tension against the sear spring then all those pins will stay in place. Put the grips back on. The right screwdriver for the right screw. Just check it for operation. And that is the Colt Woodsman designed by John Browning. Had a long production run from the early 1900s up until probably maybe 20 years ago or so. Has undergone a couple changes in the late 30s, I think around 38 and again maybe around 49 or so. Beefed up the frame, made it look a little bit nicer, put in some stuff with the magazine, changed the way the uh, changed the extractor and the way the firing pin was blocked. But all those are relatively small things. Basically the gun is pretty much under unchanged from its uh, original design. And it's a good design. It's a nice gun. Go out and get yourself one.